<laughs> Good night, viewers. Welcome to Four Sports. I'm Wayne Cunningham, and he's Gregory McBurney. <laughs> On our premier edition of Four Sports, we open on the track as athletes from throughout Trinidad and Tobago, ranging in ages from under 10 to masters, grace the Hazley Crawford Stadium on Sunday for the 2015 edition of the Sunrise Games. Here are some of the highlights. And they coming to the line, it's... Athletic clubs did not disappoint with every range of athlete from first-timers to elite to the masters coming out for the Sunrise Games on Sunday. World champion Jehu Gordon took part in his pet event, the 400-meter hurdles, and he took that in a comfortable time of 51.18 from Colonel Alexis, who clocked 54.99. Finish line, 48 under par, 49, 50. Jehu Gordon takes it. There were multiple races in the sprints, Amongst the women, Jida Barker of Cougars took race one in a time of 12.58. One, two, Jida Barker pulling away from them. Here comes Memphis Valley's Oriental one, Jida Barker takes it. But it was Astrid Casimir of Memphis Pioneers with the best time of 12.08 in race two. Wickham of Concord takes them along. Ayanna Hutchinson, Sasha Springer, Asia Eiffel, and Astrid Casimir. Jamal Andrews of Simplex was an impressive winner of the boys under 18, taking that 100 meters in 11.27. It's going to be pretty tight. Jamal Andrews of Simplex taking it from Joshua Thomas and Shiloh King. All three. The Masters women, 100 featured a field of three, with Joan Hospitalis winning, followed by Suzanne Garcia and Ishie Umbanke. Hospitalis, Suzanne Garcia. The men's masters was taken by Lester Herbert in 12.24. Raymond Smith was second. In the men's 100 meter dash, Olympian Emmanuel Callender, running for Memphis Pioneers, took his race in 10.42. But the fastest time was registered by this man, Marcus Duncan of Reboot. He clocked 10.34 to be the fastest man on the day. Jared Thomas of Avalon in second, Darwin Sandy in third, Dwayne Herbert, and Connor. We'll have more from athletics later on our show. We go to rugby. Chan Tobago's national rugby players are taking their success in stride as they look past their victory at the recently concluded North America and Caribbean Rugby Association Caribbean Rugby Championship and towards the 2016 Rio Olympics. Trinidad and Tobago claimed the North America and Caribbean Rugby Association Caribbean Rugby Championship trophy for a record third time with a 30-16 defeat of Mexico at St. Mary's Ground in St. Clair. After a solid first half, which saw TNT retreat to the dressing room with a comfortable 23-6 lead, Mexico returned to the field with renewed vigor, but it wasn't enough to regain control of the game, which TNT easily dominated for long spells. The win was an emotional one as it makes the team the most successful Tier 3 team in the region and saw TNT regaining the title for the first time in seven years. Emotions overflowed, though, when the players paid tribute to one of their former teammates, Jason Moon Clark. Clark, who was considered a rugby prodigy, had his career cut short three years ago when a car accident left him paralyzed and in a wheelchair. The former Caribs rugby club star scrum forward was taken on a lap of honor in the post-match celebrations, then included in the team's ritual chant. <laughs> Meanwhile, TNT captain Adam Frederick is happy about the win, but he's already looking forward to the 20. Yeah. 
Meanwhile, TNT captain Adam Frederick is happy about the win, but he's already looking forward to the 2016 Olympics. He says there are still improvements to be made if Trinidad and Tobago is to be successful at the North America and the Caribbean Olympic Sevens qualifier in North Carolina in June. The winners of that competition qualify for the Rio 2016 Olympics. We'll be back for more for sports after this break. Tuesdays, join us for Lowy Talk, a riveting entertainment talk program on TV4. Stream it live on www.gisltd.tt forward slash TV 4. Tweet the panel at our TV4. Hashtag Lowy Talk or call in and share your views. Come, Lowy Talk on Lowy Talk. Tuesdays at 6 30 p.m. exclusively on TV4. Welcome back. The race for the TT Pro League Championship was virtually decided on the weekend with Central FC staying six points clear of W Connection after both teams registered wins. The battle for third place was also decided with the defence force winning against Jablote. The defence force was seeking to grab the Pro League bronze medals for the second straight season when they faced a San Juan Jablote squad hopeful of a top five finish themselves. On show were the two most prolific marksmen in Pro League history, with old record holder Kerry Batiste in Jablote colors, while the army man who now holds the honor, Devon Jostling, aims to add his tally of 134 all time. And it will be Jostling doing just that, scoring his 20th goal of the season. Jostling, bouncing it off Kerry Joseph, then hitting well in the 34th minute to give the defence force a 1 0 lead going into the half time break. The second half had nothing much to talk about early on. This attempt from Akeem Roach keeping the crowd awake. The game came to life later on, though. Jostling, stinging the fingers of Shane Mattis with this hit. But the best chance fell to Jablote's Tyron Charles as he was released by Adrian Reed. Sheldon Clark does well in goal to keep the military ahead. Mattis continuing to perform his heroics in the other goal as Jostling was still being a pest. But one nil defense force is how it would stay. Third place going to Tetron, while Jablote seems assured of sixth spot. Well, looking at the standings there, Wayne, we're seeing, um, of course, at the top Central FC. League done. And done because uh, basically what's going to happen uh, on Tuesday, W Connection going to play police. Well, they should win that. Or, mm -hmm. you know, police could surprise you. But Central going to play North East Stars. That's a tough match. But... Uh, Central virtually take any title because it's six points clear already. Right? Even if they have to lose, right? W Connection had to score a whole pile of goals. You know, and they won't do that against police or the, the last match, North East Stars. Well, looking, have that game inside. Looking at the standings, the thing that stands out the most though, yeah. the bottom of the table, St. Anne's Rangers, with a massive whopping <laughs> two points. <laughs> no, well, that's, that's a, that, this makes a case for relegation in the Pro League, you know. Because um, if it had a relegation battle going on and police, Caledonia and St. Anne's had to fight for the life in the Pro League, it wouldn't have been like this. St. Anne's realized that, well, look, hey, at some point in time, they're not going to come in the top five. They're not even going to come in the, in the top seven. 
So, <laughs> so they, didn't, they didn't buy any players, they didn't do any trading, they didn't do anything. They just went through the motions with, for want of a better word, a mediocre team. You know, and the, the two points, that's ridiculous. That is, that this is this must be a record of some sort. Yeah, um, I have to look up any record books, but this here from St. Dan's Rangers is quite disappointing. And I'm telling you, if it had a relegation battle going on in the Pro League, this would not have happened. If it have, bottom place would have been interesting as top place because for the last three years, the top of the Pro League was a fight. You know, it was decided on the final day of competition, yeah. while the bottom two and three were decided by the second round. Staying with football. <laughs> there are high hopes for the Trinidad and Tobago football team to qualify for the 2016 Olympics. Because of the quality and experience of the players we have available, the schedule for the qualification series is now known, and here is what we face. Trinidad and Tobago's men's Olympic team will kick off their qualifying campaign for the 2016 Olympics with a Group 4 Caribbean Football Union qualifying match against Suriname and Puerto Rico on June 24th. The fixtures released by the CFU shows TNT in Group F along with the hosts Puerto Rico, Suriname and the winners of the Dominica vs. St. Vincent and the Grenadines tie. Only the winner of the group will advance to the CFU final round in August from which the top two teams will move on to the CONCACAF final round in the United States in October. TNT's Olympic team began preparations at the Hazy Crawford Stadium on Wednesday morning under head coach Zoran Vranish. The former Trinidad and Tobago senior team and under-20 head coach believes that TNT can move into the CONCACAF phase but wants his players to know the qualification campaign will be no easy task. The CFU also released a fixture for the women's Olympic qualifiers. Trinidad and Tobago are in Group 2 from August 21st to the 25th. TNT will open the group against Cayman Islands on August 21st. They will also face St. Lucia on August 23rd and Antigua and Barbuda on August 25th. The winners of the four preliminary groups will advance to the CFU finals in October. The top three teams will then enter the final CONCACAF round, which will involve a final eight teams from which the top two will advance to the Olympics. Further details on the TNT Women's Olympic team will be revealed in due course. Up next, it's your four sports focus where we speak to a sporting expert. Stay tuned for sports. My name is Vishesh Maharaj, the owner of Priority Drugs Arima, which is a community pharmacy, a professional service-oriented business of the retail type. One of the major hurdles that one would encounter when establishing a small business is the general acquisition of stock for a fairly balanced inventory. Our vision for NEDCO is to really make a positive and significant impact on the lives of small and micro entrepreneurs. We believe that entrepreneurs who come to NECO are looking to survive in business but also to be successful and sustainable. I would definitely recommend the services of NECO to any aspiring entrepreneur, um, whether be it for the attractive interest rates compared to other financial institutions or for the high quality of service that I experience. Welcome back to Four Sports. Now, this is the part of the show where we invite a sporting expert and we talk to them on all matters related to their sport. Today, we have with us Mr. Ephraim Serrett, the president of the National Association of Athletics Administrators, and he's here with Wayne to talk, well, obviously, athletics. Wayne? Thank you very much, Gregory. Yes, we have once the fastest man in Trinidad and Tobago, Ephraim Serrett, here on set with us for for sports focus and we're going to talk athletics because yesterday was the sunrise games at the Hazy Crawford Stadium and it had a massive turnout. I was really impressed with regards to the amount of athletes came out. I saw little tiny tots on the 9 and 10 and so forth and I saw masters, you know, 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds and everybody taking part 
and it ran off so smoothly. I have to say congratulations. Well, first to begin, I thank you for be having me here. Mm. But the, the meet yesterday was really a makeshift meet. Mm. Um, we had a lot of meets last year mm. that the ministry was that ministry sponsored, mm. and the meet promoters couldn't sustain with, with some of the individuals who are no longer at the ministry. Mm. So these meet were scheduled, and, and now the event yesterday was supposed to be the Mani Ramjan Games. Okay. And uh, having heard of the cancellation of the games as a federation, we felt that we need to do something to keep the athletes active. So we had a development meet with a difference, giving it a name. So we call it the Sunshine Development Meet. And we had over 800 participants because we cater from under 10 mm. to masters. So, as I said, over 800 participants at the Hazy Cooper Stadium yesterday. And a, a lot of clubs, did all the athletic clubs in China be able to come out because of him? Pioneers, Cougars, you know, point fourteen, and we had a, we had a fair representation of the clubs. Mm -hmm. We just the clubs from Tobago did not participate because it was a challenge for them mm -hmm. with transport to come down. Mm -hmm. um, we also had athletes who were out of the country representing their schools at the Pen Relays, but we we de designed a meet to cater for all athletes from the under tens to the 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 masters athlete, which J Hugh. I, I must commend J.U. J.U. is one of the athletes who was grown and went to the international stage after Daryl Brown and won a, a world championship. Mm -hmm. So he participates in all our meets here. Mm -hmm. So the athletes get to see him, the younger athletes. We had Kishon yesterday um, wanting to throw, but because of the, the massive turnout, we had to do some adjustment with the program. Mm -hmm. So he, he had a particular assignment and could not stay. And we had markers. We had... Uh, um, Emmanuel Calendar. So we had quite a few of the top athletes performing at the at the event yesterday. Tell me about we going back to JHU and I, I noticed something uh, with JHU's race. It was a uh, was a mixed race. You know, it had it had women and, right. so and so forth. Explain we, that to me. We catered for all the events, mm -hmm. and um, the hurdle event is one of the events we have few people participating in. Okay. And in order to, to to make up for time, we would have run an event which would have catered for the women, the under 18, and the open, because we could not have filled all the lanes in any of the categories. All right, and you, you said, you said uh, Kishon was on, on hand also, he can throw and so forth. How did the field athletes uh, fare yesterday? Well, we know that part was, was cut off, but the rest of the field athletes, how that, that part came out? Well, I, I was a little disappointed with that because the meet was really scheduled to take place in Manny Ramjan Stadium. Mm -hmm. And as a federation, we went to the, the stadium management in order to get the Hazy Coffee because you know that's the only facility that we could do both track and okay. field. So the, 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 we did that to facilitate the field athletes who during the year, they have fewer opportunities to compete. But I, 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 I was disappointed in the turnout in some, especially the male um, field athletes. But in the case of the jumps, we had a good turnout in the jumps, but in the shot put and the discuss. The javelin for men, uh, I didn't think we had a good turnout there. All right. Where, where are athletes at right now? Okay, well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to ask Ephraim that question because we want to know, we have some big meets coming up in July and August. We want to know where we at before that. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Ephraim Serrett. Every Wednesday is Sports Wednesday on TV4. Join us for the hardest hitting sports talk show on all your favorite sport topics. Stream it live on www.gislcv.tv slash tv-4. You can tweet the panel at our TV, hashtag Sports Wednesday, or you can call in and share your views. Watch Sports Wednesday every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Exclusively on TV4. Welcome back to Four Sports. I have with me right here Ephraim Serret, President of the National Association of Athletic Administrators, and we're talking athletics, track, and field. Before the break, we were talking about where we at right now with our athletes. You know, we have some big games coming up. You know, the, the first one, will Relays. You know, Relays. that's going to be just around the corner. Tell us how we're looking for that. Well, last year we did pretty well there. We got three medals, mm -hmm. uh, two bronze and a silver medal, the men's 4 by one the women 4x1 medal for the first time on the world stage. 
This year, we expect to do even better than bronze with Kellyanne added to the team. And she just she did a 1098 this past weekend, legal. And um, we have Michelle Yahi, who did a 22.01 with a 2.9 win. Mm. Kai Selvan, we have Rhea Thomas. We have a, a great women's team. So, so we expect medals anyway. Medals. Anyway. Yeah. Keston Bledman, mm -hmm. Keston Bledman is at the top of the, the IWF ranking at this time with a 10 0 one that he did this past weekend. Mm -hmm. So we have Kent Keston, we have Richard Thompson, 10 0 4 opening with a 10 0 4 Mark Burns with a 10 1 7 Rondell Cirillo. Mark Burns still in the game. Rondell Cirillo <laughs> with a 10 1 7 who, you know, would make up the, the, the 4 by one And mm -hmm. we have Kyle Giroux and uh, the 4 by 4 team. That's, we have the same four guys who would have broke the national record last year at mm -hmm. these games, which is Quau, Lalon Gordon, Jaren Solomon, and um, no, the, no, no, no. the that's, um, Marshall C. Daniels. Yeah, okay. They did that without Lendor, so mm -hmm. that, you know, as, as it is now, Lendor has to really earn his space into that top four. So that um, we should be doing well, and we have the women's 4x4 four four team as well. And that augurs well, that would give us an idea of where we are down the road for Pan Am, the Pan Am seniors, as well as the World Championships in Beijing. When are we heading out to, to, the, to the World Relays? On Where will that be? Wednesday this week. Wednesday this week. Wednesday this week. And athletes who are traveling from the U.S. and from Trinidad going to Bahamas. All right. And is this, is this um, mid, mid season or the, the peaking or what? Because World Games come up in, in August. August. Yeah, the World Championships come in yeah, August. People not really showing their hand now, but right. they're just doing just sufficient to get to the relay. Relays really bring you in shape. Mm. So people just doing sufficient to get them. To this relays, and then they would get um, go into to the program to regroup for Pan Am and then the World Championships in August. All right, my friend, thank you very much for gracing us here for the first four sports episode. You were the first focus, you know, so you could put that up on your, your plaque. You're doing many accolades. I'm you always, one more. I'm always first, <laughs> always first, <laughs> always first. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we send you back to Gregory McBurney. All right, and that's it for our first edition of Four Sports. Of course, a bright future for track and field in Trinidad and Tobago. Wish I could say the same thing for West Indies cricket, but we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Thank you very much. Join us every Monday to Friday at 7.30 p.m. for Four Sports. Thank you for watching.